For the big announcement, we bring on one Danny, the Danny, Dan Olinger, and one Ahmed Jama, who you don't know, but is now part of Team Ricky. There they are. You guys talk hey guys. to here. There, there we go. <laughs> yeah, how's it going, guys? There we go. So we are announcing the first Ricky pod that does not include Mike or I. It is a Ricky like family of pods, and it is called the Draft Council. And the Draft Council will be hosted by Ahmed and the Danny, uh, Dan Olinger. Can we see the logo, CJ? Can you put it up there? Bring Just it up. Put, there it is. Look at that. So right now you can subscribe. So if you go to, um, actually don't go to uh, draftcouncil.com yet because it's not quite up there yet. But if you search in Apple Podcasts, if you search in Spotify, or even if you go to uh, draftcouncil.com in like an hour, the links will be up there. But subscribe right now. There is a, a teaser up there right now. We will have an episode later in the week. So go to Apple Podcasts and uh, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, search for Draft Council. And what this is, is a weekly draft only pod, not just Sixers, everything draft only pod looking at next year's draft, looking at the players who played in, uh, who got drafted this year and how they're doing maybe the 2026 draft. You never know. And 2025 sure. is going to be a pretty huge draft, right? With and uh, remind me how many picks the Sixers have in 2025 draft. Oh man, we should have had this on like on hand before we came. Yeah. The, the answer is unfortunately zero. Zero, right zero. Yeah, uh, which is which is when you want to start a draft podcast. I think that's very on brand for us. And yeah, I want to just make that. sure that the draft council it's spelled the same as Ricky Council. Ricky, name of this podcast. Connective tissue is there. Everyone can yes. feel the tissue. Yeah, is connectivity. So I like it. It is going to be a big draft. Obviously, like I never watch YouTube this early, but Cooper Flag like. That kid is fucking good, but he's next year. So, first of all, uh, Ahmed, you are. We'll go to Ahmed first because nobody knows him. So you're, you're well, no, our universe. You know, like gotcha, you host, gotcha. you host. It wasn't, and, wasn't ge and generally speaking, yeah. Well, well, but no, now no, they know you. <laughs> so, uh, so you, and what's your Twitter? You because they can follow you on Twitter too. So it's at slip the screen. There it is at slip yeah. the screen. So you both have some like draft uh, and scouting history. Ahmed, talk to me about like who you are, uh, why we should listen to you about these young players and how you sort of fell in love with this part of basketball. Okay. So yeah, my name's Ahmed Jama. I'm a writer for Swish Theory prim primarily doing draft coverage, some high school basketball. So originally I'm a Georgia native, grew up a Hawks fan and been watching basketball for a while since I was a kid. And I think what got me into the draft specifically was, you know, I'm a pragmatist, you know, growing up, I was watching the Hawks and seeing, you know, that dude, LeBron James in the same conference. I'm like, man, I don't, I, I think we're capping out at a second round exit every year. So I started getting into the draft. And even at that point, you know, the Hawks weren't necessarily like duking it out for number one picks. They were kind of just a, a good, not great team, but with the draft, I kind of, I've watching the league as long as I have, I've just grown to like the evolution of the NBA, like guys I started guys that came into the draft or drafted into the league. When I first started watching basketball are now retired. I think the first draft class I really like paid attention to was 2010 when I was, uh, I think I was in fifth, sixth grade. And Whew. from that class, I think the only guy left is, or the only two guys left are Gordon Hayward and Paul George, the now future Sixers legend, Paul George. Mm -hmm. But so just kind of watching how the NBA ebbs and flows through that draft lens is kind of what I, I just like basketball in general, but that's kind of what's gotten me really like, you, you know, oh, over my I'm trying to think of the analogy to use here. That's just got me really excited about the league. What yeah. is your relationship to the Sixers now? You mentioned the Hawks. Obviously, the Sixers and Hawks had a little troublesome history and some, some trauma <laughs> I there. So where, I, I, where I think there might have been a dying. troublesome <laughs> history. Also, my greatest sports moment ever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and my, oh boy. Hey, that speaks to just the state of uh, Georgia sports, Atlanta sports, man. I've seen a lot of heartbreak, dude. That, that second round series is it's the best I have for the Hawks up to this point. But for the Sixers, honestly, like – approaching it from a draft lens initially it was just a, a morbid fascination i would say like who who can forget the the hinky in the process years and being really into the draft it's like oh the sixers will probably be you I, I imagine a lot of people have played or at least understand the concept of 2k i'm like oh it's just gonna be like in 2k the sixers are gonna be a you know decade long era defining dynasty with all these draft picks they have and i mean surprise <laughs> that's you know we're getting there we're we're getting there 
the team, you know, they've got a team's got a podcast now and you, you know, heading in the right direction on, on that front. But yeah, so for the Sixers, really, it was just outside of that series and kind of the hinky process era. Not much, not much as far as my relationship. To the it's, Sixers, it's mainly but. the I DM'd him one day and said, Hey, Ahmed, do you want to do a podcast with me? That's like, his <laughs> I think that's the main relation of the Sixers right now. <laughs> yeah. So and, gonna, we're going to start low and we're going to build. It's going to be a build. Exactly. Yeah. Which is important. And if you, just as a, a quick thing for Ahmed and Dan, if, I, again, there will be, and you can subscribe to Draft Council right now, anywhere. By the way, if you go to draftcouncil.com, the links are up there now, but wherever you get your podcast. And by the way, we would love a big chart debut from the guys. So please subscribe. Leave, leave a fucking... Uh, review even if you haven't even heard the podcast yet but uh draft council is the name of the pod if you want to hear them even quicker they did a pod sort of a draft prep pod for us in the ricky feed right before this year's draft um so dan i guess my challenge to you is okay you were like i want to do a draft pod and i was like whatever you do it's got to be 52 weeks a year and you're like, yeah, we can do that. How are you filling up 52 weeks a year with draft content? Yeah, so I mean, the main thing is you don't want it to be, a 50, like you said, when we talked about um, covering guys who are just drafted or the upcoming draft or maybe even two drafts down the line, like how the high school ranks are coming up. like Because it's not good to talk about the exact same draft class every all 52 weeks of the year. You kind of want to vary it up and how it's doing, like, you know, leading up more to next year's draft when that's coming on will like really be exclusively focusing on the next year's class but probably when the nba season starts like i would assume her shows during those weeks are going to be a lot about how each rookie in the nba is looking so it, it's just a there is basketball like it's it gets said all the time but basketball really is a 12 month a year sport now maybe not the nba itself like doesn't have stuff going on every all the 12 months but you know there's been tons of big aau games and that's one of the reasons i really want to do this show with ahmed is i don't think there's I truly don't think there's anyone who has a better grasp on like all of high school basketball than him. He just, the things he's written about high school basketball prospects is incredible. His depth of knowledge there. So there's just always like more things you can see. And it gives you such a good perspective on these guys when you follow them for a few years and knowing they're going to come to the league. Like I remember watching this guy when he was 15, like when Cooper flag first burst onto the scene with that FIBA performance where he was only 15 years old and no one really expected him to do that much. And he had like, was it like nine blocks in a game or something? It was some crazy performance where now you see it these years down the line and he's like, he's at team, U he's playing against Team USA and dominating in a scrimmage. So just the idea of like, there's always more basketball to be watched. There's always these guys to keep up with. And that's a yeah, good tagline. There's always more <laughs> basketball to be watched. That's right. Yeah. And, so and right. by the way, Ahmed, being really awesome at high school is complete fucking sicko material yeah. so i give I'm you deep I give in the you, trenches man. yeah very much but how do you get tape there's tape of all those guys oh I yeah guess now. oh really yeah so primarily through synergy but also i'll catch a few games live here and there but yeah sick it, it's and, a challenge like we might challenge our listeners to do this i'm trying to find a basketball player out there like of a certain level of recruiting status and see if Ahmed hasn't heard of them. I, I really don't <laughs> think you're going to find one, but if, if you can, like all props to you. Well, who is it? What is your like kind? What is your favorite kind of player for me? It's, yeah. Mm, that's, that's a, that's a really great question. I, I think like everyone, I'm kind of partial to kind of do the do it all point forward, kind of just jumbo initiator kind of player. But coming from like a high school background, I really do like the kind of small, scrappy, like uh, we've the kind of player we've all played. I imagine if you guys play pickup basketball, the kind of bulldog at the point of attack, the guy that's like trying way too hard is making you question whether or not you want to play. Like I love watching those guys at any level and the few that end up making it to the league, you know, I think are always exciting. Dan, me, what's your what's your type? I would say just I will always love tall guys who can pass like there's just always I think they can do something and anyone who understands off ball defense and like doesn't miss rotations, I'm like not going to be annoyed with. So really just players that either do something I think is just objectively cool or just don't annoy me when I'm watching them. Those are probably my absolute favorites. Except for the annoying part. I think the concentric circle, you've, MCW is at the middle of that, of all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit annoying, a little bit big passer initiator. Could be, could maybe, maybe time to bring him home. 
So the done. the episodes will drop largely on Tuesdays, and there's all as I mentioned, there's already a trailer there. You can subscribe. Just search uh, Draft Council in any podcast app you use, or go to DraftCouncil.com, and the links are up there. First episode though will drop Thursday, the first full episode. Why don't you tell us what is going to be in that episode? Yeah, so we mainly just talked about the guys here at Summer League. Like I'm sure the people who are sick in the head of us are probably looking ahead to the upcoming draft class already with how like lackluster this was, this last one was on the whole. But we really just wanted to talk about how these guys did at Summer League. Um, we talked a lot about Reed Shepard, mainly because, uh, spoiler alert, he was Ahmed's number one prospect on the board, and Summer League only reaffirmed that kind of. So yeah, he seems he did, pretty good, man. We we let Ahmed victory lap on the show for a while about that, and he also had a, he had a great written piece on him at Swish Theory where he just really broke down everything he does so great and why he's such a good prospect. So it was really just talking about guys who did well, guys who underperformed, a few second and third year players who either looked like they should too good for Summer League or concerningly did not look too good for Summer League. Um, and obviously, we talked a lot about Jared McCain and Adem Bonet still. So, like, like Spike said, this isn't going to be just a Sixers draft podcast. Like, it'd be hard to talk about specific Sixers <laughs> draft prospects for 52 weeks of the year. But yes, like, we will give you constant updates on like Jared and Adem this year. Like, we are not going to just ignore those two on like weeks when we don't want to. Like, we'll make sure we have those in the bit for the podcast every year or every. I week. wouldn't mind a little. Uh... A little Delaware update for the for our guys down Ooh, with, down with the blue yeah. coats. Maybe a little uh, Justin Edwards uh, situation. Maybe uh, there. Yeah. The, oh. Daryl came on the podcast last week and mentioned trying to bring on uh, maybe a center on a two way that it's been a little bit deeper in his career. Um, Kevin Aluma, who was on the Sixers summer league team, his uh, rights overseas seemed to be a little bit um, unclear. Are there who who played pretty well in summer league? Obviously, are there anybody that, like across the board summer league? I didn't watch much non Sixers summer league that that you felt would fill that capable allow Bona to develop in the G League and somebody can just step in right away. Maybe in along the lines of a Tony Bradley if they're eligible for a two way. Anybody that comes to mind? Uh, I was gonna say that unfortunately the guy I would probably number one want for this already got picked up on a two way was Orlando Robinson who the That's Kings picked up and too. I love Big Lando he is ever at Fresno State I thought he was great coming out of that draft and I was just upset that he had two forwards in a starting lineup who were like sub thirty percent three point shooters there like I I've always thought Orlando Robinson was an NBA center and he would have been one that if the Sixers got him I would have been like I would have immediately texted AU, hey, I'm going to write an article about this guy because I, I think he's really good. So, unfortunately, like my prime target for that probably got taken already. Uh, Ahmed, do you have any others on top of your head? No, I was going to go for Orlando Robinson. You see, he's this really is good. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, they can't well, get Darryl, Orlando Robinson. <laughs> they so. can't get him. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, Ahmed, welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this started. The Danny, uh, the legend grows, and um, we are excited for the first Ricky pod without, of course, we have Carl Landry Record Club, which I host with Mootloo, which is a music pod, but another basketball podcast from the Ricky, draft-centric, called The Draft Council. If you go to uh, draftcouncil.com, the links are there if you would uh, if you would like to subscribe, or you could find it in any podcast app. So, um Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you guys. You Welcome popping to the on. Family. L loving how you're using the mics. We had to have like a little, <laughs> had to have like a little uh, mic, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tutorial with Ahmed and the Danny, and now they're sounding fucking great. I love it. So, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Good luck. Yeah, I appreciate you guys.